Have you ever wondered what the biggest web browser was in every country since 2009? Me neither, but I can show you on this cool map I found. We're going to review it and many more in Arty Charty Chart Review Episode 2. Let's go. Okay, so we've got Internet Explorer, sort of pre-2010, sort of dominating the entire landscape, most of Africa, uh, most of South America as well. And slowly Firefox comes into effect. You see it a bits in Africa, uh, quite a lot of Eastern Europe as well. 2012, so we've got a lot of Google Chrome now, basically taking over all of South America, all of America. And then Opera Browser, uniquely, strangely, in Africa, coming into effect around 2014. In 2015, we get a new Google Chrome logo, slowly taking over the world. Opera still holding strong in Africa, but Google Chrome looks like it's winning out. India, I don't know what web browser that is in India. Oh, it's gone. It's now Google Chrome. Opera still holding out in Central Africa. And yep, now all but gone, apart from a few countries. 2019 seems like nowhere uh, is Google Chrome anything but the most popular browser. We still have Safari in a few countries, but I can't see where. 2021, <laughs> looks like Greenland briefly used Safari more than Google Chrome. Now 2022, May, it looks like pretty much everywhere Google Chrome is the most popular browser. We do have Safari and Microsoft Edge. In some countries though, I can't see those anywhere on the map. If anyone can see them, please let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, let's review this map from a visual design standpoint. So first of all, uh, the animation does tell a story. It does bring the reader along a narrative in a way that maybe a line chart or a bar chart wouldn't really be able to do. Now, while I do like the use of logos here, uh, they are intended to make this graphic easier to read and more intuitive to the audience so they can think an intuitive feel of what the actual most popular browser is in each country because most people know what these logos are and it means you don't have to look back and forth between the legends here. That's a good idea. However, I find the execution slightly problematic in, in reality. And that's only because a lot of these logos are expanded so wide, for example, here in Russia, here in Canada, here in America, that they do become a little bit hard to read. It's not so clear that this is Chrome because you're not seeing most of the actual Chrome logo. Something like Opera, on the other hand, is a little bit easier to see because the Opera logo is smaller and there's a lot of white space around it. So it, it becomes, you can see the entirety of that logo. Okay, next we have the date of the last legal execution in every country in Europe here. Let's read this map together. We have our legend here, which is a nice um, sequential color scale from before 1900 right up to the present day and that's going from white right down to black and that makes sense in this graphic that enables us to see there are a lot of countries um to the right there's a lot of countries actually technically outside of europe to the east of turkey that um uh, have, have the last execution was in 2022 and um, we have a country here i believe is belarus that the last execution was actually only last year by firearm. Essentially, the map is showing overall that Eastern Europe in general, their most recent executions were uh, not that long ago. Uh, Western Europe, and especially Northern Europe, the last execution was nearly 100 years ago. Interestingly, though, we get places like Germany, uh, France, Spain, and even the United Kingdom, whose last execution was barely even 50 years ago, 1964 in the UK. There was an execution by hanging. That's um, quite unbelievable, actually. And there we go in Iceland. Looks like its last execution was the longest time ago, 1830 by beheading. Things I like about this graph, the story here is actually quite interesting. It's actually quite fascinating. It's not something we think about that often in Europe or at least in Western Europe. Um, the death penalty here has pretty much been abolished in most of the European countries, unlike in places like America where certain states still carry the death penalty, in Europe it isn't really a consideration in everyday conversation now. So to actually see in some places the most recent execution wasn't all that long ago, and especially in Eastern Europe, this is an interesting story and something I think most people don't know. I also like the fact the creators told us what the method of execution was, so we've got firearms here, we've got firing squad, hangings, guillotine in France, 
quite fittingly. However, things I don't quite like about this graphic, I do find it quite visually cluttered. There is quite a lot of text here, maybe almost too much text, you know, although I do like having the method of execution here. I do find it, it does slightly muddy the story. The story here really feels like what the title is saying, which is the date of the last legal execution. It's not really talking about the method of execution. If we really wanted to add this method of execution in, it'd be nice to make this an interactive map where the user could sort of hover or tap over each country and it would display a tooltip with a bit of a breakdown of that last legal execution. And the other problem here is that there are no country names on any of these countries. So obviously we know this is Russia, I know that's France, Spain, but unfortunately I, I, my geography of Eastern Europe isn't quite as good and, and a lot of these countries here, I, I do find myself struggling to work out what countries those are. Of overall, I, th I think the, the map is a good introduction to this data. However, I think if you really want to understand what the title is saying, as in the date of last legal execution, an additional or another visualization type would be really useful here. And I think what we need to have is actually a timeline. So we would do away with the map altogether. On our y-axis, we would have our list in descending order of most recent executions. So it looks like we would have a lot of these countries here, followed by Belarus, followed by Russia, and they'd be ordered on the y-axis. On the x-axis, we would have the date in years from the earliest execution, which looks like it's Iceland, to the most recent one, which is the present day in 2022. And then we'll just have a marker delineating where those legal executions were. Encoding the data in that way would allow the user to really compare the scale of these executions here. Because I think one thing that is missing from this graphic is really understanding how far away something like 1830 is compared to something like 2022. And last but not least, we have a map from one of my favorite data viz creators. This is P.T. Gorman from Barely Maps. You guys should totally check out his work online. I'll link in the description below. So the creator here has mapped the different climate zones of Hawaii, but colored and encoded those climate zones by Instagram photos from those regions that have the same colors as the scale he wants to represent. Let me zoom in here and show you exactly what, uh, exactly what I mean by that. So if we go down to the legend here, we have green, which is the oceanic climate zone. And the creator has selected, it looks like images from Instagram that are mostly green. And he's used those in place of just using a, a generic or a block of green color. If we go down to something like rainforest, we have this yellow color here and uh, P.C. Gorman has taken a bunch of yellow flowers, bananas, um, more sorts of, uh, looks like some sort of yellow fruits there, sunsets, and I imagine each of these are tagged as having been taken in that location. So this is a really unique and interesting way to visualize this data. It's very artistic. Again, it's, it's one of the ways of presenting data that isn't purely analytical. It is going a step beyond that and it's drawing the user and it's drawing the reader in, in a way that um, a purely analytical data visualization might not be able to do. So I really like this graphic here. So I've been trying to work out how Barely Maps actually created this and I'm gonna take my best guess, but here's how I think he's done it. He started off, I think, with a map of Hawaii. He's divided that map into a grid and each of those grids has been given a specific bin of coordinates that latitude and longitude coordinates. Before the photos are overlaid here, we have the actual colors of what those squares or those grids should be. So we have the greens, the purples, the whites, the oranges, and the blues. So once you know what color each of those squares should be, you know that this square here, for example, should be green. You can then, you can go to Instagram, you can search for photos taken within that geographic region maybe using the latitude and longitude coordinates or another geographic marker like a town or a city name. And you would ingest all of those photos, run the photos through a dominant color algorithm, which will extract the, the most dominant color in an image, which works something like this. So you feed it an image 
Uh, in this example, it's chopping that image up into different squares, and each of those squares is given a color value according to what the algorithm determines as the most dominant color in that particular image. So once you take all of those Instagram images, you can apply a dominant color algorithm to it, find the ones that match most closely the colors needed in this legend here, and then you simply replace each of those squares with the actual photo, and the collage, as you zoom out, creates the underlying map in of itself. I think it's a really neat, a really unique and original way of visualizing data, and yeah, great work. Okay, thank you for watching episode two of Arty Charty Chart Review. This is a brand new series where I am reviewing some of the past week's top data visualizations online, and not only trying to work out what they're saying, but also critiquing them from a visual design point of view so you can make better charts and better infographics because there are a lot of commonalities and common pain points I see. Uh, so hopefully we'll come across with some of these as we go along. And as I say, this is a brand new series. It's also a brand new thing for me to do really, releasing and recording these uh, reaction and review videos to YouTube. So still playing with the format, still working out exactly how best to deliver these. It's a work in progress, but hopefully together we'll get there. If you haven't already and you like this sort of thing, if you like reviewing charts in slightly too much detail, but if that's your thing, this is what we do here, um, please subscribe and leave a comment uh, and tell me what kinds of charts and what kinds of data visualizations you'd like me to go and review in an upcoming episode. So yeah, thank you. And um, yeah, there'll be links in the description to all of the graphics I've reviewed here. Thanks.